There is no bigger title in combat sports than the heavyweight title. The coveted position of baddest man on the planet is reserved for only one man who can blend the technical precision of championship grappling with the brute physical power needed to win. In just a few days, 16 of the world's most feared grapplers will all step foot onto the ADCC mats, but only one will walk away undefeated. Oh, Nick Rodriguez with the upset. Sapphire getting oh. the back here. This legendary division again features some of the biggest names in the sport. With explosive wrestlers, devastating leg lockers, but most importantly, it features the most decorated spread of champions across any division. Oh, oh God, I got it. Hook. Whoever comes out on top here will have earned their spot as heavyweight king. To find the baddest man in the world, these 16 titans of grappling must go to battle. And one by one, they will fall until only a champion remains. Power, precision, technique, and tenacity. Who has it all? The tickets are sold, the athletes are ready. Now all that's left is combat. This is an unparalleled look into the lives and mindsets of the individuals marching towards battle on September 17th. See how they train, prepare, and approach this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. This is the most exciting submission grappling competition in the world. Welcome to the ADCC Path to Glory. Over 99 kilograms, the baddest man on the planet. Gordon Ryan, the reigning ADCC absolute champion. The current Super Fight Challenger, every obstacle that has been put in his path, he has obliterated. He's not only the greatest of his generation, he might just be the greatest of all time. Now, the perpetual submission machine has set his sights on achieving even more history. In addition to the highly anticipated Super Fight with rival Andre Galvao, Gordon will attempt to clean out another division as well. I'm doing the weight class plus the super fight. I'll be the first person ever to do that. I'll be the first person ever to win a weight class plus a super fight. And I'll be the first person ever to win three weight divisions uh, at ADCC. So a lot of records to be broken this year. You know, as the greatest of all time, I want to do things that no one's ever done before. Having those matches in the division before Andre is actually a good warm up. I'm usually a pretty slow starter. My first match of the day is always the worst match. So I think that having the two matches, the semifinals and the finals, will be like a nice warm up and I'll be like awake by the time I have to fight Andre. Beating Andre, someone I've never competed against before, and then winning the division as well. I'll be 27 years old as a five time champion. The only person who will have more medals than me is Andre at six, but that's just because I haven't competed in enough ADCCs to actually have six medals. I think ADCC is going to be by far the biggest jiu-jitsu event ever in history. ADCC is going to bridge the gap from a participant-based sport to a spectator sport. I think that this is really going to be the first time where you have many people at an event who don't do jiu-jitsu. Gordon Ryan gets the submission. Oh, oh Gordon gets the hook. Right on the nose. It's over. When a lot of people come out and they see those 13, 14, 15,000 people out there. They're going to crack under that pressure. When I see those people, that's what I, I come alive. I'm looking forward to seeing how the rest of the athletes handle the, uh, the pressure. This will be a new division for me where I have to move up and I have to deal with all the problems of giving up 40, 50, 60 pounds to, to these guys. They have, in general, lower standards and lower levels of technique, but the physicality becomes a real issue. They present different problems, but they're very interesting problems, and I'm looking forward to going in and having to compete against guys who are much heavier and a lot of them with a lot more experience than I have, so I'm excited to do this third division. Short of me getting injured, or me like showing up in my stomach just like takes a turn for the worst, which it did last time, but I still won. You know, I look at my division, I look at the athletes in it, and I'm just like, yeah, the, the, these guys have no chance. Like, this is an easy division for me. What some call easy, others would call a gauntlet of established champions with an opportunity of a lifetime in front of them. This division 
features the most ADCC medals. All 16 are as accomplished as they come in the sport of jiu-jitsu. But for Gordon Ryan, ADCC is his playground. Cyborg's tough, um, very explosive, very tactical, very physical. I mean, it'd be cool to compete against him again just to, to track progression because I haven't fought him in four years. Vinny is a match that I want, so hopefully I put him on my side of the bracket because uh, he's the last person to beat me in 2018. I never competed against Orlando, who's a former ADCC champion. I've beaten more ADCC champions than anybody else in history, and I'd like to add Orlando to that list just because he's an American legend. He's very, very talented. Uh, Victor's another interesting one. Like, you play guard, he's another heavyweight that can invert and stuff like that. Victor was actually calling me out for the longest time asking for matches, so I punked him online, and then he's never opened his mouth again. He can be a very tough match for the other guys in the division. He's a zero shot of giving me any kind of any kind of issue. I think the biggest threat in the division is definitely Joao Rocha. He's been to the finals multiple times. He's been at ADCC. It's just like a pain in the ass. Like a big, strong, athletic guy. Nicky Rod is a guy, out of everyone in the division, he's definitely the most physical. Probably the most explosive person that I've, I've trained with or, or competed against. Nicky Rod has historically had some issues with closed guard, dealing with leg lock. He's obviously a much different grappler than he was uh, when I trained with him. One thing that Nicky Rod doesn't have going for him that he did previously uh, is the element of surprise. Everyone's been taking him seriously. Everybody knows he's good. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out when people are actually respecting him and, and taking him as a serious threat. Oh, beautiful high crotch! This is the tournament of upsets. You guys want to hand fight with me? You want to wrestle with me? Fucking made my life a lot easier. I don't know no jujitsu. Know how to wrestle a little bit though. If you want to wrestle with the champ, fucking go get some, bro. My name is Nick Rodriguez, aka the Black Belt Slayer. I'm trading out of Austin, Texas from B Team Jiu Jitsu. I'm looking forward to this year's ADCC. I feel like since I started training jiu-jitsu, the goal is to be the best. It's going to be fun to go out there and, and compete in front of everybody and show, show people out my abilities. You know, Gordon's definitely the best guy in, in the division as far as knowledge and technique. You know, he's, he's got it going on. I've trained with a guy every day for three years. You know, I know what he's going to do. I know what I'm going to do. I think ADCC's adamant about attacking offensive movements, uh, they're adamant about having opponents constantly um, engage. I'm a very engagement driven grappler. I like to touch you a lot, I like to move you, push you around. I like to get you off balance and get you into bad positions. I'm quite rough out there, quite rough in training, and that's what I'm accustomed to, and that's honestly what my opponents don't like. They don't like to go out there and get, get pushed and pulled around and snapped to the mat, and uh, that's exactly what I'm going to go out there and do. Uh, welcome to B Team Jiu Jitsu. We're out here in Austin, Texas. Full match today, per usual. And uh, we're here to have some fun. So, today at B Team, we're going over some dominant positions. I'm a big fan of passing from body lock position, right? So today we're working on a few different ways of acquiring the body lock, and later on as we go down the technique, we'll work on passing the body lock and staying on top and crushing our body. The most exhilarating grappler in the entire bracket, Nick Rodriguez. The black belt slayer shocked the world in 2019, and with a blue belt around his waist, he upset champion after champion, establishing himself as a force in the heavyweight division. I don't think anybody could have expected or predicted the outcome that I had. As a heavyweight, I was kind of understanding that hand fighting would enable me to outlast and outwork my opponents. I was very confident I was going to win. Although I took second, I realized that after those matches, uh, how much I, I really had to work on. What I was able to do in the practice room, as soon as I translated that towards competition, I understood quickly that I could be really good really fast.
In preparation for this next ADCC World Championship, I'd like to win by points and submission. Previously, I was able to win by advantages. I'm continuing to evolve my game. What I was six months ago, a year ago, I do better and I do differently. I really do see myself beating a lot of these guys in, in, in my weight division. You can expect Nikki Rod to go out there and slay a bunch of black belts. I think if I get to anybody's back, I, I, could, I could put them away. So I'm just gonna focus on doing what I do best, use my dominant top pressure and wrestling to put these guys down, force them to a bad position and take advantage of it. Hannah and Gordon definitely gonna be my, my toughest matches. Victor Hugh is a big boy, he's gonna be good in there as well. And if I could be those, uh, those guys, I could be everybody in the division. Cyborg's in there. I don't think Cyborg uh, really has a chance. I just think his jiu-jitsu is a bit outdated. It's probably harder for him to evolve, you know? It's an older style of jiu-jitsu that he's accustomed to. And I think these newer guys are a bit more athletic or younger or hungrier. You know, it's just, it's a young man's game, really. You cannot tell the story history of the heavyweight division without mentioning the fight sports mainstay, Cyborg. The 2013 ADCC absolute champion is no stranger to victory. And while he missed the podium in 2019, Cyborg is on a warpath to reclaim his position as top dog. He has history with just about everyone in this bracket. Unfinished business is a great motivator. And whether it's a rematch with Nikki Rod or another shot at Gordon Ryan, Cyborg will be ready for anything. One of the freshest faces in the heavyweight division will be the Six Blades Black Belt, Victor Hugo. The accomplished big man will be making his second appearance at ADCC and has all the tools to win, flow, pressure, finish. Victor Hugo is ready to etch his name in history. I was able to be on the last ABCC. I learned that there's not gonna be any easy matches, you know? There's not gonna be like time for you to acclimate. You gotta be like there ready. Since then, I've been dedicating way more time for Nogi than I used to do back then, trying to study, trying to apply new strategies, and try to have a good, well round game. Because of how big the division is, how big the event is, for you to like shine on that day is gonna add up a lot to your career. It's gonna be the, the, the hardest division, the hardest tournament I've ever competed in my whole life. We have Gordon, we have Philip Pena, we have Nick Rod, we have Cyborg. We're finding the best guys in the world, so to exhibit like a position of control and submission, it takes a lot of work. Going up high on the armbar, nice. very close here. Victor Hugo close again, the finish. It'll be good to steal the show. I hope I can do that. If I'm healthy, if I have the right people with me, I think it'll be a good day. All right, guys, thanks for being here. Uh, let's help Tyrone and Eoheli get ready. They travel tomorrow. Let's get it going. I'm going to try to be fast with the explanations. I think pretty much what I'm going to show you guys already know. Just like a quick reveal and then get to work, okay? My main train now is Gi, but that doesn't like keep me out of learning more no Gi stuff. I've been studying, studying strategy with Shanji, trying to apply new games, and it's good. It's been like a kind of like a low-key year for me. I haven't competed much. I did only one Nogi fight. So since that fight, I've been trying to improve more my leg locks. Because I tried some, a couple leg locks, I had good ventures, but I couldn't get a tap. So it's just good. It was a good pointer and trying to develop some new parts of my game too. Yeah, I'm going to get some rounds in. Uh, try to roll with the guys that are going to compete the trials, give them good training, you know. Uh, whenever that happens, I try to give that good train. I try to maybe, maybe sometimes play this strategy that a guy you play against me, even though it's not my A game. But it's not about me, it's about them now. So just trying to be the best train partner. Some days you're in the nail, some days you're the hammer, some days you're both. <laughs> it's a tough training room, it's a small like class, but pretty much everyone here has a major tournament on their roster. Been American champions, world champions. It's just the best, you know, like, 
stuff to make a highlight out of it. It pushes you, you know, it makes you like stay in line. I love this period of the year where I have a lot of people from coming from outside, from association coming from other uh, countries and making the train even harder. It's good. I expect it to be the biggest event in Jiu Jitsu history. I mean, it's already proved there will be. We never had uh, 10,000 people watching Jiu Jitsu. So I think for me as an athlete, what I can do best is be on my best version and give them a show. Everyone is really excited to see the super fight. Plus Gordon entering the plus 99 kilos make it very interesting too, you know. It's always good to have a shot at the best guy, you know, to test yourself. I have nothing but respect towards him for what he has done for this sport. He's proven everyone that he's the best. I think that match would be like a dream match for me right now. I think people would be really excited to see it. I've faced Cyber before, of course, he beat, has beat me, but I have, I have beat him before. Nick Rod was the silver medal over the, on the other ECC, and I, I have beat him two times. If you will study grappling, you can see that I have a good shot at the division, you know. I would love to be on the way of one of these guys, give them a hard challenge, make this show go towards other direction, and let's see what happens, you know. The legendary Gracie Baja competitor, Felipe Pena, is back once again at ADCC. Felipe Pena is your 2017 ADCC Open Weight Champion. After winning the Absolute Division in 2017 and coming up short in the 2019 Super Fight, Pena has refocused and plans to give one last shot at ADCC glory. In my career, I always look for tough opponents, biggest matches, it's good to come back to the weight class, you know? Oh, and he gets yes. the submission! And finish! Rear naked! I think uh, what more motivates me, it's uh, the event. To be part of some event with this magnitude, it's definitely the biggest event uh, in Jiu-Jitsu, in grappling, uh, ever. My focus is not only the weight class, but weight class in absolute train like really hard to get there and do my best to win both. I know there is a lot of tough guys, you know, but I already did once and if I do a second time the open weight, I think no one ever did that. So I think that's definitely something like I talk about legacy. Pena looking transfer to the back. And he's locked the body triangle. Pena has one of the most decorated histories with ADCC standout, Gordon Ryan. Opa. Oh, this is similar to yeah, the Studio yeah, 540. Exactly. This oh. is exactly where Pena oh, took the gonna pass. Pass. Oh, gonna pass. The two have put on three of the most exciting matches in Jiu Jitsu. This is the third match in what has become the greatest rivalry in Nogi grappling. And a potential fourth showdown looms large over the historic tournament. I'm doing pretty much uh, because of Gordon, you know. I'm moving to MMA and I want to face him before I change my focus, you know. I think uh, I move to MMA, I probably uh, will be my last fight or my last tournament, you know. I think it would be pretty nice to face Gordon, you know, because everyone wants to see how the eyes going to be there. I think I can beat him. I know I read, uh, accomplished many things, you know, but putting my name on the history and being the, the only guy to win the open class two times, I think it would be really nice to do this match as I end up career, you know. Some reader, Black Belt, and the Yuki Ishikawa representing Assembly Jiu Jitsu. I'll be competing in the ADCC plus 99 division. ADCC definitely changed a lot. You know, I've always seen it as a big thing, but now it's even way bigger than I used to imagine. Even the trials, the West Coast trials, like uh, 250 people in the division, that's, that's crazy, man. I'm, I'm doing four times a week. The lower body, 
like twice a week and then the upper body strength. I mean the 99, so I'm trying to go against some big boys and I'm trying to put up some weights, you know. My goal is to go out there and make it more exciting, to be part of the reason why, you know, people are going to remember ADCC 2022. Elbow back, elbow back, head down. Oh, look at that. that great defense. Wow. Man. This past two years, I've been competing a lot. I've been focusing more on Nogi. You know, I've, I've done a lot of big shows. And deep inside, I still feel like I haven't shown my best yet. My style is like, you can never count me out. And I believe in my style, you just take one wrong move, one wrong step. And I feel like with my pace, it's gonna surprise a lot of people. And if someone's gonna get caught, I think I'm gonna be that guy to do the catches. Yeah, for sure. Looks big take down there from Heist and outside I understand the opportunity that's in front of me, you know. Where I'm from, this is not normal. This is not normal at all. So, I got nothing to lose and uh, I feel like I'm dangerous because of that. All right, welcome to Assembly. This is the logo right here, Assembly Detroit. I'm here at least six times a week, for sure. Originally born in Ghana, I lived there up to up until I was 15 years of age. Through my dad's job, uh, he moved uh, me and my brother to Japan. Through my dad's boss, I got into training Jiu Jitsu. I'm training in Japan definitely. Uh, in the early days, it was it was much different experience for me, you know. And I, I would say that really helped develop my style a lot because size-wise, I was usually one of the bigger guys in the you know, in the school. I got flipped over. People were submitting me left and right, like oh. This like size doesn't really matter, you know. Even though they, you know, I was the bigger guy in the class, but you know, I had to pay attention to the technique. I used to look up to a lot of bigger guys, you know, guys like Kenan Colonials. I remember just watching him because I grew up like a Kenan fan. Orlando, all those guys, Rodolfo Vieira, Shesha, you know, just watching those guys, you know, and I, I see how big and fast they could be. I, I just wanted to be like that, like wishing one day, you know. To, to make it or to be even close to that environment, you know, what a dream. In 2016, 2017, I think, I was working in Carpe Diem, was, and I remember David walked in. He was just traveling to train and other stuff. He was the first guy that I met who was from Detroit. He invited me out here to come for a seminar or something. So when I came here, like, I saw the places, the guys who were training with, I'm like, man, this is not bad. So one day I was just like, back in Japan, the pandemic hit, I didn't have nothing going on, I had a visa sitting down. That's how I ended up here. Career-wise, it was the best move. See, my life here is pretty simple, you know, just train, sleep, repeat. the opportunity to represent my country and uh, be on a, to do something that nobody's like actually never really done before that's like a big deal for me making it to where I am right now like I had to go different routes you know it wasn't like a straight path now where I am it's like wow it's it's actually happening you know I have the opportunity to to do this thing representing assembly Jiu Jitsu Haisam it's got this. This could be over right here. Cruz is a danger. For Heisem Rita, this is the opportunity of a lifetime. One of the younger competitors in the bracket, Rita has broken out recently on the Who's Number One stage and is eager to replicate his stunning success in September. The ADCC mats are the toughest in the world, and Heisem Rita plans to take full advantage of the stiff test in front of him. Since I moved here, who's number one helped made my name and I'm very grateful for that. Finishing all the cruise is one of the highlights that helped me get the invitation. Like, I just messaged Mo, you know, like, hey, it's there anyway. So all of a sudden he messaged me on Instagram, hey, call me, this is my number. And he was like, hey, congratulations, you in. You know, I tried to visualize how like loud the place is gonna be and all. And I'm, I'm just gonna give the crowd energy. Judo background is gonna help a lot. My legs, inside trips, outside trips, and my wrestling too. It's just gonna give me that little bit of space and I'm gonna capitalize on that. So I'm very confident I can finish whoever.
Yeah. Throughout, you know he got a good wrestling, very explosive guy. He might be physically strong too as well. Gordon Ryan, yeah, he's uh, the best guy in the division. He's the favorite to win uh, everything, I know. Felipe Pena too. I got respect for the guy, but I feel like I'm the guy who's gonna spoil that party because, you know, everybody's looking forward to Felipe Pena, Gordon Ryan, potential finals, probably gonna be the dark horse to not make that happen. It's to win ADCC, you know, it will be the craziest experience. And I have what it takes, you know, I have a feeling that I can make it happen. I can shock the world. All the money, all the stakes, and all the marbles are on the line. To win here means writing your name in the history books forever. Will it be the dark horse who finally gets his due? Or will champions of yesterday return to form? Could a new superstar emerge? Who will be crowned the baddest man on the planet? Cancel your plans. The sport of grappling is on the cusp of greatness. Watch history unfold right here on flowgrappling.com.